Hey guys, Editing Amazing here. I just wanted to check in with you guys real quick while I'm making this video. Um, I wanted to show you guys a little bit what I'm up to in setting up the first iteration of Dragline Dynamics. Okay, so we're in a bit of chaos right now, so I'm moving. So I'm, I'm setting up all my, my 3D printer and stuff. Over here, we have a CNC, uh, you know, work in progress. Um, <laughs> got some... A uh, metal machine there just as a test. This is aluminum. So usually I love aluminum, but uh, it's proving to be a bit difficult. I have no idea what happened here and there. So uh, don't worry, I'll figure it out, but it's a work in progress. So this is one of the upgrades for the CNC spindle so that I can cut aluminum better. This would be the actual spindle and that's the Z stage that it would hold in. So this is a very robust system here. The only issue is since the CNC I have is actually only very slightly not adapted for this part. So we have to quickly adapt the CNC with this part to fit this new stage. And this is 3D printed as you can see, but it's pet and G, so it's pretty strong. And use this one time, because it's not gonna last long, uh, on cutting aluminum version of this part. <laughs> and then we'll be able to use that um, with this. So hopefully that'll work. As you can see here, I've got some samples of my adhesive project, so that can just stick right there. Pretty nice. As you can see, my workstation is pretty disorganized. Uh, but don't worry, I'm working on it. And I'm working on organizing all my resistors and things into drawers, watch bands, switches, uh, threaded inserts, uh, uh, ring connectors, uh, various chips. So I've got op amps in here, uh, 555 five, five timers in here. I don't really use that stuff, but you never know when you're gonna have a use for it. Um, oh, diodes, quick connects, uh, hose clamps, Oh my God, what is this? Oh, big screws. I think those are uh, half inch um, 13 screws. Yeah, it's for a wall climbing project. One way check valves, rubber bands, O-rings, battery connectors, Peltier modules, you guys know what those are. So yeah, there's a lot going on here, but we're gonna we're gonna find out the best organization method. I'm actually going to eventually put a fume hood right here, um, which will have the resin printer, uh, curing station, and washing station here. And that's all going to be in the fume hood so that I don't get any of the IPA fumes or the resin smell. Um, and all the fumes are going to be out the window. They're going to be filtered first, don't worry. So I'll have to replace the filter. Any of the chemical experiments uh, will have to take place in that fume hood as well. So we're going to be extra safe. Another thing is we're definitely going to have this CNC mounted in a more robust way. Um, I'm going to try to bolt it to either a steel plate or just a rock, essentially just mount it somehow to like something very heavy on its base because it's generating a lot of vibrations right now and that is not great. So that as well, I've purchased a, a more acoustic foam chamber. Um, so really try to get the noise down because this is going to be running quite a bit and I, I can't stand the noise. So we'll, we'll figure out a solution as we always do. The journey never ends. All right, guys, so by now, you've seen me shoot webs. You've seen it, you know? It's old news, what's the big deal? All these improvements that I'm making with web shooters, they might only be apparent to me um, because I'm the one who's using them, but I'm gonna assure you that everything I'm doing is absolutely necessary to make this technology as accessible as possible. That being said, today, we're gonna talk about something I don't talk about often, and that is the web fluid. Now, the web fluid that I have now, I've shown many times in my videos. I've shown the proportions, the percentages, all the ingredients, names, and all that stuff. I've done a tutorial. But the thing is, this web fluid is not strong at all. It barely has any tensile strength. Now, I firmly believe that the web fluid can be stronger. 
And there are many ways to do that. If you look at the work of The Blood Spider, another spidery channel here on YouTube, he's gone through many iterations of web fluid, each one with different properties, and he's got a pretty good handle on what makes the web fluid have different properties. What I wanna do is use this as a teaching moment to explain what kind of additives can be used to increase the strength of a polymer matrix. Now, we're gonna start off by talking about short fiber composites. Now, a short fiber composite is what you might expect. It's a material consisting of a low strength matrix that is reinforced by short fibers. In contrast to a long fiber composite where the fibers run the entire length of the part, these fibers are short. They don't run the entire length of the part. In fact, they're very short on the order of just a couple millimeters or so. The advantage here is that we can infuse the web fluid with short, strong fibers that will theoretically increase the strength. The cool thing with polymer extrusion, like web shooting, is that when you have short fibers in a polymer solution that's being extruded through a very small hole, like the nozzle of the web shooter, the fibers can actually align and increase the strength even more along the axis of the strand. This is similar to the way the protein chains in spider silk align when the dope is extruded through the spider spinnerets. So we're gonna start out with Kevlar. Kevlar is your run-of-the-mill high strength material. It has a tensile strength of four gigapascals, which as I've shown in my videos, is higher than both spider silk and steel. It's pretty strong stuff. So what we're gonna do is infuse my existing web fluid with short Kevlar fibers and just make a couple observations and see what we can find out. After making this web fluid, I could already see that the Kevlar wasn't really flowing with the web fluid in a homogeneous manner. As I rotated the container around, I could see Kevlar getting stuck on the walls. That didn't bode well for this solution. Nonetheless, I loaded it into my web shooter, and uh, not great results there. <laughs> I would say definitely had an issue with uh, the flow rate coming out of the nozzle. Flow rate seemed to be hindered quite a bit. So I decided to conduct some experiments uh, simplifying the system just using a set of nozzles of various diameters and seeing how the Kevlar flow is affected. I collected mass data as well as video data so that I could tell the time that the valve was open and how much material came out in that time, using this as an estimate for flow rate. Now here are the experimental results. Now I want to make sure you guys know that these results are extremely crude. The first two diameters, 0.5 and 1.7, had only one test uh, associated with them each, and the 2.4 millimeter nozzle had two tests. The numbers you see here are an average of those two. Uh, however, they, they had quite large discrepancy between those two numbers, so take this with a grain of salt. But there are some things here that we would expect. For instance, uh, exit velocity sort of has a maximum in the mid-range of diameters, and this is because on the lower range of diameters, say 0.5, the viscosity actually is the limiting factor uh, that restricts the nozzle velocity. However, on the higher end, increased cross-sectional area for a given flow rate is the limiting factor that causes the outlet velocity to be reduced. On the other hand, we do see that increasing the diameter does increase the flow rate, which is expected under the Hagen-Poiseuille law. If you don't know what the Hagen-Poiseuille law is, just watch literally any of my other videos. I probably talk about it in there. It's like my favorite thing now. So all in all, some interesting results that may suggest that a small diameter might be hindering the flow rate of the Kevlar. Uh, however, I wanted to take this under a microscope and see how the Kevlar was distributed throughout the webbing. Now it was clear with the smallest diameter sample, you could see clumps of Kevlar. This improved in the webbing that was shot out of larger diameters, but it still seemed like there were areas where there were clumps of Kevlar. So if you think about it, if the fluid flows just fine through the nozzle, 
and then the Kevlar is introduced, right, a solid, a colloid essentially, um, it can't move through the nozzle as effectively if it's not flowing homogeneously, and so you see these clumps. And that probably does not do great things for the strength of this webbing. Now onto the big question, did it make the webbing stronger? Now, I'm gonna say no. First of all, it doesn't appear to have had any macroscopic effects on the strength of the webbing. I can't notice a difference between what I've shot before versus what I've shot that's Kevlar infused. But the truth is, I haven't made any actual measurements, so I can't really say for sure, but I will say the effect is not noticeable. This is probably due to the fact that the matrix material in this case, the existing webbing that I've been using, doesn't have a very high strength. And so as a result, the fibers, which are separated from each other, they're not long fibers running the continuous length of the strand, can just fall apart from one another where there's only webbing to be separated. That being said, I refuse to make any qualifications or quantifications on the strength of the Kevlar infused webbing because I don't have the proper equipment to measure tensile strength. Once Dragline Dynamics, my laboratory, becomes more than just a green screen background, I can start to build the equipment that can test the difference between regular webbing and Kevlar infused webbing, as well as a whole host of other types of webbing I plan on developing. So stay tuned for when I have the proper measurement equipment and I will start to conduct a sequence of experiments that will lead us in the right direction to a very high strength web fluid. So I hope you enjoyed this little video. Uh, ask me any questions in the comments below. This is very similar to what a lot of you have asked me about carbon nanotubes, um, but Kevlar is just a different version of that. I'll definitely be doing some tweaking of the Kevlar formula especially trying to make it so that the Kevlar is truly suspended, neutrally buoyant in the web fluid, whereas now it doesn't seem to flow with the web fluid in a homogeneous manner. So stay safe, stay amazing, and I'll see you. Rent. Rent. I gotta get out of this place. I'll see you in the next one.